Well, Julius, doing something on uh, on Moxie, and um, you know, obviously a, a big play the other day. What would you see him kind of go through in that game, for, from getting picked on early to, to making a play, big play late? You know, I think it was a great learning experience for him. You know, being a young guy, he's just starting to really get his feet wet playing a lot of football. So it was one of those things. They made some plays on him early, and we stressed those guys to continue to battle and continue to fight and trust your technique and trust your coach. And so it was really good to see him, you know, you know, execute what we've been working on. He played with great eyes, played with great technique, and made a play, which kind of got the momentum back to our team. He's been kind of put in a tough spot here the last couple of weeks with not a lot of bodies at corner. What, what was your message to him as you, as you put him out there the last couple of weeks? Just everything he's worked for. You know, it, it doesn't matter if we got 12 guys or two. Two guys take the field. And so, you know, he's a kid who's worked hard. You know, he, he's still young, but his development is coming along. He got to continue to just go out there and get better every day. Um, and I feel like he's starting to do that. How close was that battle between him and Cleshawn for, for the starting spot coming into the season? You know, it was close, but at the end of the day, like I said, I thought Cleshawn was very consistent doing fall camp. And so Cleshawn kind of took that over, and, and Moxie was able to see it and continue to work to make himself a better player. In terms of his skills, what, what do you like about what Moxie brings to the table? You know, he's a kid who has really good feet. You know, he has some God-given ability. I think he has to continue to develop, you know, in terms of his techniques and just being patient, you know, as a – the young corner, you always want to make every play right now. And it really, you know, sometimes you just got to let the play come to you and, and trust your technique and know you'll be in the right spot. So he's starting to get a feel for the game. He's, he's starting to play a lot of football, and he's able to understand how teams are going to try to attack him. You went through it a little bit as a player, too, playing with Gabe, didn't you? That people would occasionally someone would kind of come after you a little bit because the guy on the other side was the all-conference guy or whatever. You, you kind of deal with that a little bit as a player? Yeah, you know, and it's just one of those things. You, you really want that. So... When you come here and you play corner, you want to get a chance to make plays on the ball, you know. And so it's one of those things you just got to step your game up. You got to know that that's what's going to happen and be ready when it does. When uh, the other day, Coach uh, Yates said that, you know, the thing that he likes most about Moxie is, you know, just kind of how he projects and that he thinks he can grow and get better. What, what do you guys see in him and, and the learning curve? And how, how steep has that learning curve been for him? You know, uh, he has some God-given ability. You know, he, he's pretty smooth and he can do some things that you can't teach, I think. The learning curve is high. You know, I, I think he's just starting to tap into how good he can be. You know, I don't think he's anywhere close. And for him being a young player, the one thing I stay on him about is you got to continue to hone your craft and continue to get better. Um, and, you know, I think he's starting to take to it. You know, I think he, he puts a lot of pressure on himself. And when guys make plays, he wants to come back and respond. You know, and so I've been pleased with that. He's a kid that doesn't hang his head. And, you know, we want him to go out there and be a warrior. Did you guys, I mean, Mike kind of anticipate there, there would be I don't call them growing pains or not, but you can already see from the UConn game that he obviously got better as that game along and went along and then made that huge play in the fourth quarter. Do you, do you maybe anticipate that you know it's going to take him a few reps to kind of figure some things out? You know, I think that I think if you look at that one game, you know, I think you can see that. But if you go back and you watch the film on him when he came in against Ole Miss, he was solid and he played a solid game against Colorado State also. So, you know, that that's going to happen. You know, I think it was the service was different for a lot of guys and, and some things like that got into their head. So. You know, I don't, I don't look at it as this past game. I just look at his total body of work, and he's a kid who's going in the right direction. There's no doubt about it. Dante came back uh, off the injury. How, how did he look out there? I think he was one of your defensive players of the game, so I, I guess you guys must like what you saw there. Yeah, didn't he look pretty good to you? You know, <laughs> I, thought he, I thought he played well. You know, he, he got a pick, obviously, that four touchdown, and uh, he's a warrior, you know, and, and that's one thing about Dante that I love. He's an absolute competitor, and he go, <laughs> you're going to have to knock him out to beat him, so he's, he's going to go, um, and, and that's the one thing I really like about him. But. I thought he looked pretty good. I don't know what you guys thought. You guys have, uh, you know, you're second in the country in interceptions, but you know, you rank near the bottom of uh, passing plays of at least 20 yards. I mean, how do you kind of look at the you know, the risk you guys take and the reward there? I guess where you get a lot of picks, but you also give up some big plays. No, there's no question. We're not happy where we're at, ranked in the country, and we're not going to accept that. Um, and so, you know, while while we got the picks, we don't have the other thing. And the one thing we're chasing is to be great back there. And so. You know, those kids know exactly where we stand in terms of giving up those plays, and we work every day to correct it. Um, and it's not something that we're going to accept or, you know, we're not going to accept that. Is that something where maybe you guys do take some more chances to get some of the picks and stuff, or maybe that's going to – some of the bigger plays are just going to happen? Or No, I think you don't go out there and take chances. I think you just read your keys and trust your coaching and then, you know, let your God-given ability take over. You know, if you look at Moxie and Dante's play, they, they didn't take a chance. They just read their keys and reacted and was able to make it. So. You know, that's the one thing I think those kids are starting to figure out. If you just trust what we're telling you and let your guy give an ability to take over, you have the ability to make big plays. And, you know, we're not happy where we're at in terms of the explosive plays, but we're going to continue to stress it and work on it every day to get better. Marcel, I mean, it sounded like the other day that missed assignments are really the issue, right? And it's not that you're getting beat. It's more that guys just aren't where they're supposed to be. Yep, it's, it's communication. Um, and so we have to continue to do that. You know, obviously, it being homecoming, it being a home game, it's going to be pretty loud. So. 
you know, we got to we got to communicate when it's loud and be able to execute. We looked at that fourth quarter and we talked to you about it last week and you know, the first couple of games you guys averaged over 200 yards passing against UConn only allowed 40. I think the quarterback was six of 13 in that final couple of minutes with two picks. Uh, in the crunch time, happy with, with the way your guys guys respond there when, when you know you took a three point lead in the fourth quarter and kind of needed it. Yeah, you know, and I think the one thing they should take from that is that's how good they can be. Um, and so it's not a surprise to me by any means that they were able to go out there and execute. You know, I, I know they have the talent to do it. So, you know, like I said, we just have to continue to work and continue to present it to them. You know, this is where we're at and this is where we're trying to get to. Um, and the one thing about our kids is they care. So they'll continue to work and get better at it. The last couple of weeks you've gotten Chancellor in for, it looks like you bring Chancellor in for a little bit on one side, then you put go back to the uh, – what is it, Darian, and then and then flip it and bring DSG in? Is that kind of the idea? Just get get them their feet wet a little bit? No, you know, guys are earning reps, um, and they understand that. You know, I'm not gonna just put any guy in there to go in. And so, those kids are earning reps, um, and they're going out there. If you look at the last game, um, we had DSG and Chancellor in at the same time too. So, you know, those kids are going out there earning reps, and you know, we want them to push the other guys. And if they're able to pass them up, then they'll, they'll be the starter. So, you know, our starters know no job is safe. How have you seen them develop through the first couple of weeks? Those two guys. You know, they're coming along. You know, they're both really, in terms of playing, they're both really true freshmen because Chancellor hasn't played. And so, yeah. you know, they're able, they're starting to process how fast the game really goes, you know, and they're able to see it. Um, and so I'm encouraged with where we're at. You saw these guys last year, Louisiana, obviously, at Arkansas State. What, uh, what do you remember? What, what stood out about that team? You know, I've actually played them the last two years oh, when I was right. in Troy. Um, you know, they're a big physical team. Um, you know, they're coached very, very well. They got big wide receivers, big offensive linemen. And so, you know, I think Bronco Nation will be surprised when they run out of the tunnel what they look like, but they're a very, very good football team. And if you don't read your keys and play discipline, there's no doubt they'll take advantage of it. How'd it go two years ago at Troy? I'm 0-2. 0-2. Are you going to mention that to your boys at all? Nah. <laughs> with, uh, with, 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 with Jeremy Davis in, in that last game, I know he had a touchdown what, in, in, in the third quarter, but there was a long time in that game where he was a talented guy, but he kind of disappeared. Why, why was that? I mean, it was, I don't know if Dante or anybody was on him in particular, but why were you guys so effective? You know, I think it's a combination of a few things. You know, I think we, we had some good defensive calls. Coach Yates, you know, called a great game and put in some great calls. And then I think at certain times we executed too. You know, if you look at Dante's pick, it was a one-on-one -on -one situation. And so, uh, you know, I think it's a little bit of both. But there's no doubt he's a great player. And on that touchdown, he, he made it look real easy. So, you know, there's, there's no question.